Hey everyone. So, as I teased in my last garage video, I want to show you guys now the last part of this project, or the last major part, which is the HomeKit Accessory Program. So this program is going to be based on HAP Node.js, so you will have to have that running and installed on your computers. So if you don't know how to do that, go and check out one of my other videos that involves HAP Node.js for how to get that set up. There should be a link in the top right of your screen now. But yeah, so let's dive into this program. So here you can see the HomeKit app that I've created. And up all the way at the top, we have these basic just little uh, required pieces of code. So this basically is like importing in C or Arduino. Down here, we have some information that you should just change for your own setup. So we have the name that you want to give the accessory. And it should be unique as it will end up being part of the unique ID for the accessory. So it's a good idea to not have two accessories with the exact same name. Also, it just makes it confusing in iOS if you have that. Then you need a username and a serial, which should also both be unique. So I actually just generate these randomly. They're like MAC addresses effectively, and they should both be unique as well. So just make sure that when you set this up that these pieces of information are all unique to the accessory itself. Then down here we have the MQTT IP. So if you have your MQTT server or broker on your on the same computer that you run HapNode.js, then that will be 127.0.0.1. Otherwise it will be whatever the IP address of your MQTT broker is. And along with that, we also give a username for logging into the MQTT broker. It's not necessary, but I like to do it just because why not? Then we have two topics here. So remember we have the topic that we send a command to to control the garage door. So either zero or one for open or close. And then we also have a status topic. Now, if you saw the last video, you'll remember that I had the statuses being zero through three. And that's going to come into play here. So you guys will see exactly why I did zero, one, two, three, and what they all mean in a little bit here. But this is the topic that posts those status for opening, closing, open, and closed. Then there's just a little bit of setup for MQTT down here. So this just sets up, you know, creates a new instance of MQTT and then sets up the options, connects, and also uh, defines our callback. So whenever we get a message, we're going to do something. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the current state. So that will be the zero through three that I've been talking about. In order to get those messages, we will have to subscribe to that topic. So we also subscribe to the topic here. So that's really all there is for MQTT setup. Now I'm gonna skip below all of this just for now, and we'll get to the accessory setup here. So all of this code here will run the accessory, but down here is where we actually define what the accessory is, and how iOS will communicate with it. So I've created a unique ID variable. And so you can see this is actually based on the name. So this actually sets up uh, all the back end necessary for a garage door opener. So we give it the name and then the, the unique ID which we just generated. And then we're also going to add a username, which is, again, it's similar to the serial number. And then the pin code, which is defined up above, and I'll show you exactly where that is, but it's basically, it's just the pin code that you enter into iOS to activate the accessory. Then we have some triggers here. So all the way at the bottom, we have a trigger just for the accessory info. And this is whenever iOS asks the accessory asks the garage door opener, what is your manufacturer, your model, your serial number, all of that info. So this code here gets called and it just basically pings back a couple of other pieces of information 
that are defined as part of our accessory. Then we have the two main triggers here. So we have the trigger for the current state. So remember, there's two states. There's what the garage door is currently and what we want it to be. So here we have the current state. So iOS will, whenever you open the home app, it will say, what is the garage door state? and it will call this here, which will call a method up above, which I'll go over. And it just says the door is open, it's closed, or it's somewhere in between. Then we have the target state, which is when you click close the door on iOS, it will trigger this chunk here, which will tell the garage door to open or close. So that's just sort of the basic setup here. And then going up here, you can see I've created a new class here called Garage Controller. And the name is the name that we defined above. That pin code here, you can see right here. The username, again, it's taken from above in here. Manufacturer, HapNodeJS, you can change that to whatever you want. Model, you can change that to whatever you want. And the serial number is also grabbed from up here. So then we have a couple of variables here. We have target state and current state, and then output logs, I actually need to remove that, and you probably won't even see that in the uploaded version of this, so you can ignore that. But we have these two variables, target and current state. So initially, we just define them both as closed, because that's generally how, the, if the system starts up, the garage door will actually end up being closed most of the time. So those are in our initial states. And then we just have a few methods here to go over. So set target state, like I said, that is the method that will be called whenever you click on your iPhone or other iOS device to change whether the garage door is open or closed. And basically we're just checking to make sure that the state is not equal to the current target state because we don't wanna spam the garage door opener and say open 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 if it's already open so we just first check to make sure that the new state is not equal to the target state and if as long as they're not equal we then set them to be equal so later on when we check again we can you know keep that updated and if the state is equal to open then I will publish a zero here. And this is publishing to the MQTT broker, which the garage door is connected to. And then if we receive a one, which is also the same as closed, then we will publish a one to MQTT and that will cause the door to open. So the last thing that happens here is we update iOS and that just calls this little method right here, which just calls this update value on both the target and current state. And that's basically just a ping back to iOS to say, yes, we changed the state and here's the new updated state. So that's really the most complicated method here. We then have a get target state. So whenever you open the iOS app, it will get the current and target states and it just calls the get target state and get current state and update value and get the getting the target and current states they are a little bit different i don't know well enough why they're different but basically the update value pushes to ios and the get target state or get current state is ios asking the accessory so I guess it's sort of a difference of sending that value to iOS versus iOS asking for that value. And then really the last thing we have here is just set current state. And that just happens whenever the garage door changes its current state. So you can see here up above, I have these values here just for reference. And this is where those values zero through three came from zero if the garage door sends a zero to the status topic, it will set the current state to zero, and that will mean open, one for closed, two for opening, and three for closing. So that's where I got those numbers from. And basically it's just, you know, posting to MQTT, and then the accessory receives it, 
and then updates iOS depending on what the current state is. So that's all there really is to the uh, garage door opener. All right, so now that you guys have seen how this program works, let's go and just check it out in the real world and see it running. All right, once again, we find ourselves in my garage, hopefully for the final time. And here you can see I have the HomeKit app running and I've brought up my garage door. And you can see it currently says that it's closed, and it is. And if I click open, you can see that the garage door did open and it now detects and says that it's open. And if we close it, You can see that the garage door has closed and I've also been notified and everything detects as it should. So this is the last part of the garage door series. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this and hopefully you guys are also now motivated to build your own smart garage door openers. Well, I want to thank you guys all for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you're feeling really generous and you want to see even more of these larger projects, go to patreon.com slash itkindaworks and just toss in a dollar here or there and it all goes to just making these bigger projects and just this channel better in general. All right, well, thanks for watching. I will see you guys later.